This production should be viewed in conjunction with Close Air Support Part 3 Fighter Turnaround and the Airfield Engineer Squadron. Initially, in an armed conflict, opposing sides will try to gain air superiority in order to freely maneuver on the ground, and each will try to neutralize or destroy their opponent's air power. Airfields are high priority targets, likely to be subjected to saturation attacks, employing a variety of weapons, and strongly supported by electronic warfare, tactical reconnaissance, and fighter aircraft escorts. The ground threat may involve small teams of intruders attempting sabotage or small-scale attacks aimed at stopping or slowing down air operations. The Airfield Air Defense Battery provides protection for airfield runways and taxiways, aircraft shelters, fuel and ammunition storage sites, operations centers, radar and communications facilities, while permitting friendly aircraft and supporting ground elements to operate freely. Every possible early warning source should be used to increase the alertness and effectiveness of the defense. The battery is organized into a headquarters with main and alternate battery command posts and a signals element, a missile troop, a gun troop, and a support troop. The battery commander commands the unit from his tactical headquarters or battery CP, while the control of fire and movement is exercised through the battery CP staff who are integrated into the main and alternate wing operations centers. From these locations, the BC and command post staff issue air defense warnings, weapon control orders, the appropriate state of readiness, and receive air operations advisories on controlled air movement within the base defense zone. The missile troop breaks down into a small command and control headquarters and four tracked ADATS detachments. Each gun troop has a command element and four sky guard sections, each consisting of a fire control unit and two gun detachments. The support troop includes administrative, medical, supply, maintenance, line repair, and fuel and ammunition resupply elements. They provide essential first-line requirements to keep the battery's equipment and personnel at the appropriate state of readiness. A major point in the air defense estimate is consideration of the requirement to engage attacking aircraft before they are able to release ordnance or effectively fire their onboard weapons. This involves sighting an area missile system to counter enemy aircraft using standoff weaponry prior to their reaching a seven kilometer line of weapons release and a close-in gun system to destroy attacking aircraft employing direct fire weapons and free fall ordnance before a two kilometer LWR. The planning sequence for a deliberate defense involves a map study, site reconnaissance, and a defense analysis assessment. A map study is completed to identify likely firing sites within a one to 1.5 kilometer radius of the airfield center for the sky guard sections and within a three to five kilometer radius for ADATS detachments. The airfield area is then divided into recce sectors which are assigned to the troop commanders. Troop commanders carry out a detailed recce of each assigned site within their sector, selecting level firing positions with easy access and minimal terrain screening. They measure the angle of sight and ranges to the crest of any terrain obstacles 
and calculate the unmasking range for an aircraft normally flying at 100 meters above the crests. With information appropriate to a particular threat, the recce officer then completes a first visibility sketch. He also completes a sight diagram and fills in any other pertinent information on the data card. The resulting information is passed to battery headquarters. A defense analysis assessment is completed by the battery operations staff, which provides an accurate picture of the effectiveness of the defense. It involves the development of a visibility template for the radar's unmasking range and the buildup of a first impact trace for each potential weapons site. These indicate the depth of the defenses and the mutual support provided. The analysis can also show the number of possible engagements from any direction of attack, the effect on the overall defense to counter a change in the threat or the adjustments needed to fill the void should a particular fire unit be taken out of action. The analysis may be completed manually or by automated data processing techniques. The primary and selected alternate firing sites are detailed and prepared for the forthcoming deployment. Line systems are installed, interfering elements are removed, and access routes marked. A deployment site for the battery echelon is designated at a location outside the airfield area. Control of air defense fire around an airfield is very important and is achieved by positive and procedural fire control methods. Positive fire control involves weapons control orders, which permit systems to engage all targets to engage targets not positively identified as friendly, to engage only targets identified as hostile, or to engage targets only in self-defense or in response to a formal order. Pre-established procedural fire control is implemented through rule of engagement, hostile act criteria, direction received from the airfield battle commander, and from the layout of the BDZ, which is normally divided into four different sectors, each with its own weapon control orders. The rules of engagement involve each weapon element or detachment being assigned overlapping arcs of fire, which facilitate the targeting of attacking aircraft. For instance, in a line of stern attack, an individual system engages the lead aircraft within its primary arc. Otherwise, it focuses on the trail aircraft. In addition, the firepower of the battery is distributed so that aircraft attacking from any direction will meet an increasing weight of fire from systems which are sighted in depth and whose primary arcs are concentrated on the most likely approach. Procedural control also includes friendly aircraft conforming to airfield arrival and departure procedures. These normally involve designated flight profiles within a sector incorporating a combination of track, speed and altitude criteria, communications, landing lights, landing gear position and an IFF response. Lame duck procedures that help identify friendly aircraft with mechanical problems or battle damage which are unable to comply with normal wing arrival procedures, and timely information on the arrival of all friendly aircraft. Effective control of the battery's weapon systems depends upon efficient communications, which include a battery command net to pass early warning information, movement orders, alert and NBC states to each ADATS detachment or Sky Guard section. An administrative link from A echelon to the battery command post. Fiber optic and field cable line communications between each weapon system and the battery CP. And a dispatch rider for administrative communications. The ADATS detachments are individually deployed and linked via combat net radio and, where possible, with landline to the battery command post. They have an intercept range of over 8 kilometers, a ceiling of 5,000 meters, 
and can function around the clock in adverse weather conditions. The detachment carries eight ready-to-fire missiles with impact or proximity fuses. Additional missiles are carried in the detachment's support vehicle. The fire control system includes a search radar for continuous air surveillance and designation of aerial targets. It provides target information at ranges in excess of 20 kilometers, up to a height of approximately 6,000 meters. The upper housing contains an electro-optical module consisting of a forward-looking infrared imager, a range-finding laser, a laser-directed missile guidance unit, and a low-light TV camera for target acquisition and tracking. These systems permit passive acquisition and tracking of both air and ground targets. They are connected to the command and control consoles to provide the required data for visual displays and firing calculations. A remote optical site backs up the tracking systems and assists the commander in acquiring short duration targets that may be masked against radar detection. The SkyGuard sections are independently deployed. Command and control orders are passed from the fire control unit to the guns via data and intercom links. The fire control unit incorporates a radar-based wide-angle search system, which provides continuous surveillance of the approaches to the airfield and tracking of multiple targets, along with a system for long-range tracking of specific priority targets. These are backed up by an electro-optical system incorporating a TV and laser range finder. It also includes an optical sighting chair, which provides an additional means to acquire unforeseen targets. A digital computer processes the radar's target data, controls the tracking of targets, provides gun alignment and firing information. It also sets up control displays containing search and threat information target designation data, and details on the operational and technical status of the gun's systems. The guns have an engagement range of about four kilometers and can fire a variety of ammunition at a rate of 1,100 rounds per minute. In the remote mode, both guns fire at the same target using direct inputs from the FCU. They may also be manually operated under good visibility conditions at individual targets with the laser range finder providing distance information to the gun's computer while the operator tracks the target. Each incorporates an integral power unit and a permanently mounted camouflage kit. The missile detachment or gun section commander is assisted by the battery CP in processing information to affect the required procedural and positive control measures. In the last analysis, the detachment commander is the final authority in determining whether or not to engage an aircraft. Firing. The airfield air defense battery is the key element in providing for the continuing operation of airfields against increasingly sophisticated weaponry incorporated into modern low-level attack aircraft. Its thorough integration into the overall airfield defense plan and the adherence by friendly air crews to established procedures will greatly assist in the defense of an operational airfield.